of the Covenant Myth or Reality According to Wikipedia, the Ark of the Covenant is a gold-covered wooden chest described in biblical accounts, which, according to Jewish tradition, was designed and created by divine mandate to hold the tablets of the Ten Commandments given by God to Moses. The Ark represented the presence of God during its existence. It is said that it had magical powers and that only worthy people could be near it and that it was possible to communicate with God through it. Is it true that Ark existed? What was it really? Where is it now? In this video, Yes, he will answer all these questions. What was the story of Ark of the Covenant all about? Does it have to do anything with preserving DNA? Yes. The Ark was a genetic container. Still is. Still is? Where is it? Those had inside samples of the main inhabitants of planet Earth in nano containers, of course. It was also weaponized, as it could defend itself. Three were built, image accurate. One is in a dump, possibly in Area 51, possibly under the Pentagon. Another is in Vostok Base, South Pole, under Russian control and possession. And the third one is on this ship. The American one is out of order and only a shell. The Russian one is active and the one in this ship is also active. How did they get it? And why was it constructed in the first place? To hold and protect the biology of planet Earth should a major catastrophe may occur. Americans and Russians got it from different places. Where the Americans got theirs is sketchy, as it is said to have been extracted from Egypt. But I say sketchy because that's the plot of the 1979 movie Raiders of the Lost Ark. The Russians got it from under Mecca and it is the Ark of Gabriel, who is said to have spoken to Mahomet and given him the task of guarding creation in a box, Ark. Reason for the construction of the black cube 666 in Mecca. Quick clarification, was Mahomet a real person then? Yes, he was. In history, some are real people, but with exaggerated attributes. The third one is the Ark of Michael, which in reality is the Ark of Isis, as she was a geneticist, Ishtar and it has been under our keeping for generations. Who built them and why exactly? All three were built at the same time? Yes, the reason is because the Tigetans knew that the Earth was going to go through a cataclysm right after the Tiamat disaster. So with redundancy in mind, three arcs were built and in them the biology of Earth in nano-containers was kept. It's impossible to place their all biology, 
but as much as possible was saved their DNA codes. Tigetans built all three? Or the Federation? Why three? Tigetans are Federation, and it was a Federation operation entrusted to the Tigetans back then. Why three? Two were to be kept on Earth in safe places. One in the Federation starport and dump under Giza, the other in Sumeria, deep underground, under Alt-Ur, another Federation starport. And the third was to be kept and guarded by Tigetan forces, as it is to this day. What's that? That's the Alt-Ur starport in Iraq, where the Ark of Gabriel was kept for thousands of years. The Muslims, at a date that I believe to be circa 5th century AD, uncovered the Ark of Gabriel from Ur and took it to Mecca, that is the birthplace of Prophet Muhammad and the place where Gabriel revealed the Holy Quran texts. It was placed there under or in the cube, can't decide. And the Ark of Gabriel was kept there under Muslim guard and control until the year 2015, when Russia, in a shady exchange for something undisclosed, probably political protection, and because of its Caristos lines and allies in Saudi Arabia, uncovered the Ark of Gabriel and took it to safeguard it to Vostok Base, South Pole, far away from people and mobs, probably anticipating a social collapse, as Caristos and Russia had foreseen a transformation lapse of time from the years 2017 to 2022. Ark of Gabriel, Russia given ancient apocalyptic weapon uncovered in Saudi Arabia. Conspiracy theorists claim Saudi Arabia has given Russia an ancient apocalyptic weapon discovered under Mecca's Grand Mosque. The arcs are not empty boxes or ice boxes to keep biology in them. They are high-tech devices capable of defending themselves from anything that may menace what it guards in its interior. The entire biology in genetic samples and codes of planet Earth, no less. It can communicate with Federation forces and Tigetan ships above, and can also repel what its AI may consider to be an attack to its integrity. This also has brought about or caused humans to say it is protected by the gods or by God and holds strange divine powers. This is the case in 2015, when the Ark was removed from its resting place where it had been since the 5th century AD. Here, Yashi refers to the 2015 incident, the Mecca crane collapse. A crawler crane overturned over the Masjid al-Haram, the great mosque in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. 111 people died and 394 were injured. The accident has been cited as the deadliest crane collapse in modern history. The Saudi Civil Defense Authority confirmed that a crane collapsed through the roof of the mosque during high winds created by a powerful storm. Wikipedia. Why did it collapse? Does it have to do with the Ark? It caused it to collapse. It defends itself using high-tech weapons, 
mostly magnetic altering AI weapons. That was all a cover-up operation to hide the extraction of the Ark. The American Ark, on the other hand, was opened after being found under Giza, and many people died in the process. But the Americans basically destroyed the Ark, trying to discover its secrets. Okay, wow, this is all so fascinating. When was the American one discovered under Giza? In 1939, by the Nazis removed and recovered from them sometime in 1945. Steven Spielberg's Raiders of the Lost Ark 1979 movie is mostly true and a cover for real events. Amazing. Okay. How was the DNA of so much biology collected? By a laborious tractor beam sample recollection, not very unlike cattle mutilations now, but in a lesser invasive and non-lethal way. Okay, so it just exploded? They opened it with power tools and explosives. But before that, it used magnetic weaponry and sound blast defensive technology to stop the Americans. Many died. Did they know what it was? when they were trying to open it? Probably they didn't know. All they wanted was power. They thought it was a transmitter to talk to God. In a way, twisted way, it is, as it can talk to people in orbit. It is said that Moses kept inside the ark the broken tablets containing the Ten Commandments. This is mostly symbology. Why did the Federation leave it there, under Giza? Why not take it up? I mean, if something happens to Earth, isn't it safer up there? They were supposed to be in a very safe places, in dumps, under Federation control. Okay. You mentioned Moses. Was he involved with this story then? It is said that the Ark was given to him by God. In reality, he took the Ark from Giza as it was a symbol of power, as no army that holds the Ark before them can be beaten. It was said that anyone who held the Ark would become invincible. He took it from Giza? And what did he do with it? He returned it there, right? Since it's where it was found later. He was Egypt's pharaoh. He could do anything he wanted. What happened to the Ark is dubious. It wandered in Europe for a few hundred years, around 1000 BC, before being returned to Egypt by ancient Egyptian priests and people working for them. Where it was and where it had been again is not clear. It is said to have been in France with the Gauls, and then in England and Ireland with the Celts. And this makes sense, as Ireland and Scotland have strong roots and communication with Egypt, as the Egyptian culture was born in Ireland. But it finally returned to the exactly same spot under Giza, or not exactly the same one. Probably the same spot. That's strange that they would know where it was originally. Back then, when Egypt was still strong, of course they knew. And they also had access to at least shallow parts of the dump and the so-called labyrinth under Giza. Greek historian Herodotus described the dump in detail and even at least hinted to the location of the Ark. Okay, now I must ask, why was it called Gabriel's Ark? What's he to do with it? You said he talked to Mohammed. But how does it relate to the Ark? And why the other one is Michael's? 
Gabriel because he was the one who hid the Ark there. It was entrusted to him by the Federation. Michael's only because Christianity altered events, removing any protagonism from any female, because it was the Ark of Ishtar, Isis. Why? Because it was her who kept biology of Earth there to prevent destruction during the foreseen and coming cataclysm. But all three arcs were then her idea to maintain the biology in them? And the third one? Whose is it? Okay, again. Ark of the Covenant in Area 51 now. Ark of Gabriel in Vostok Station, Russia, South Pole. Ark of Michael, as said in human terms, on Toleka now, here. Covenant equals Federation, main arc. Arc of Michael was the prototype. Arc of Gabriel was the redundant. Arc of the Covenant was the prime one. Wow, I didn't know it was officially called that. I don't know so much. Why did you need to keep the biology of Earth in DNA capsules? So what if it gets destroyed? Just asking. And you got dogs in there too? Earth was nearly destroyed because of the Tiamat incident. That's why the Arcs were built. They are Tigetan technology, old but still working. I know, but why is that biology needed to be preserved? I mean, did you have in mind to recreate all that biology somewhere else in case something happened? Yes, on Earth again, to reseed biology on Earth. No dogs, because those are very recent, or it may contain ancient dog-like canines. Here, the angel symbolism, Tigeta and Charistus side by side winged people. You know the symbology since three years ago. I see. Did this happen already before reseeding? After some reset? Yes. After the cataclysm, many species were reseeded in mass, although they are being seeded all the time. Why does it need to be reseeded with same biology? Why not seed it with something from outside Earth? It is being seeded with things out of Earth all the time. But Earth as it is, is a living laboratory, a logos of biology, a library of biology. Earth is going through a mass extinction event. Thousands of species are going extinct now and have gone extinct in the last 200 years alone, more and more as time goes by. This is a problem because I know the Federation is behind the mass genocide plan at work right now. It is protecting the logos of planet Earth. The problem is that there are no justifications for genocide. I am pointing my little finger at them as the guilty ones of conspiring against the people of Earth. However justified purpose they may have, there are other ways to conserve people and their right to exist and the biology of planet Earth. I see. Okay, let's leave the Federation and current situation for another topic for now. Returning to the Ark. I have a question about the color of that Ark. Is that golden shiny paint the original color? It looks so newly painted and undamaged. The shape is accurate. It was made from ancient texts, including Dead Sea Scroll like papyrus. It's not gold paint. It is made of solid gold. Wow, quite beautiful. Now, how did those photos leak, really? They are made public just like that? What you are looking at are copies, 
based on accurate texts and images from Egypt. Oh, I see. Is that how they look though? Is it accurate? They are accurate, as there is one on this ship, and it is exactly like that. The Egyptian papyrus texts are very specific. Cool! Okay, so the other two are exactly the same looking? They look exactly the same, all three. People are misled into thinking there was only one. Neat! Do you keep adding new species to it all the time as they appear or transform? No, the Ark is containing species as they were before the Tiamat cataclysm. But don't worry, because many teams of other species collect specimens all the time. Taigeta simply is overtasked and cannot do that now. Okay, how did the Romans who were behind the Bible writing business know about them? Enough to thread it into the Noah's Ark story? The Romans took ancient texts and twisted them to fit into their narrative. Okay, so it appeared in ancient texts. Yes, that's why it is known to be so accurate. So it wasn't that secret at the time. There were people who knew. No, it was not. The existence of the Ark of the Covenant, the number one, making it known, also helped keep in safekeeping the second Ark. Why? Because we all knew it was going to be sought after. So they place all their attention into finding and obtaining that one, because it holds great knowledge and power. And men always want more power. So a machine, because that's what it is, with so much power, will always be sought after. So them running after the first one keeps them there. So they didn't know about the others. Yes. And the third arc is in the Museum of Antiquities, two decks up and aft of my place here, behind the glass, and among other Egyptian relics. It is over 2,500 years old. Wow, okay. Do you also keep arcs like this of other planets? Do you have one of Taigeta's biology? Yes, all planets have arcs. Their keepers make them. And the primordial keepers are the little grey gardeners. But shouldn't it be kept somewhere not on the planet in case something happens there? Like for example, if I have a copy of the key to my flat, I don't keep it inside the flat, but give it to someone else. That's why Arc 3 exists, here, in orbit, and inside the innards of a large heavy star cruiser. And those of other planets? Each one has their keepers in turn, mostly gardeners, but not only. Who is Taigeta's keeper? Taigetans, of course. But where do you keep the Taigetan Ark? No reason to take them off planets. But Temers is on Era and Eras is on Temer. And Procyon's is on Dakote. And Dakote's is on Procyon. For safety. Where? In convenient safe houses, mostly underground. Humans are now the keepers of the Ark. Not because they were appointed as such, but as they have it in their hands, in Vostok base, Russia. One Ark. American Ark, I am not sure how damaged it is. Questions from the followers. There is a rumor that there is one Ark in Ethiopia under 24-7 guard, and the guardians who watch over it have short lifespans from being near it. Was it in Ethiopia? I am aware of Ethiopia. I've even overflown that area. There are two aspects of that Ethiopia angle. One is that it may have been one of the orcs moving through there for a period of time, 
then making its way to the place where it was later discovered. But both arcs that can be placed in Ethiopia were found in dumps deep underground, one in the labyrinth under Giza and the other under the main structure of Alt-Ur in Iraq. This only from me. A long time ago in Ethiopia, I could see from the air the ark they have there during one of their ceremonies. Ethiopia is a land-locked, extremely poor country, surviving by a very limited area of farmable land, and life there is quite desperate. It is also a Christian or Catholic country. What I could see as the ark they have there has nothing to do with the three arcs I'm talking about that are of Tigetan origin. What I could see is a large, low, semicircular metal container, dark in color and handmade. Nothing like the rectangular golden box with angels on top of the other arcs. Fetching something, one moment. Not joking, that looks like the arc they have there, only not as tall. It's more like a deep soup platter with a cover they keep on a rectangular, super ornamented, mostly embroidered cloth, rectangular box. There is no other there as I swept the area with my starship sensors. The entire area is very old, covered with stone carved temples. They are keeping that kettle, for lack of a better word, as the Ark. Ethiopian temples where the Ark resides. Wow, nice. They move it around. What do you think they misconstrued it as the Ark? Someone in the past may have told them it was the Ark, and it was probably taken for faith. And if they truly believed in it, then even miracles may have been attributed to the Ark, even though it is only them manifesting all that for themselves. That's for the Ethiopia question. Awesome. I didn't expect this answer, thank you. Welcome. I have many others. Hard to choose. Uh, this one. With who the priests communicate through the Ark? It is said they could communicate with God through the Ark. The problem here is misconceptions. The Ark held and still holds frequency as in the proximity of a UFO, ship, because it is built the same way with the same zero-point technology. So in its proximity, density shifts and involves whoever is there. And in a higher density, telepathy reopens fast and people may have had visions and telepathic communication with anything that connects to their personal specific frequency. The device is zero point, so it takes its energy from the air and polarizes it like a capacitor, just like pyramids do. So if you left it in the air and you do not know how it works, it will give a very powerful electric discharge through the handles on either side, then through the body of those trying to move it or steal it, electrocuting them. Okay, why is it called the Covenant? What is the Covenant? The Covenant can be interpreted two basic ways. Covenant means the group, the union of followers the Federation. It will also mean those who follow Akhenaten. Covenant literally means solid and binding agreement as in having a commitment to follow the Ten Commandments written by God, supposedly residing inside the Ark of the Covenant, according to the Bible. Someone is asking, does the Ark only belong to the Jewish people or it belongs to humanity? Belongs to planet Earth, 
belongs to the people of the Tigetan culture as a present to ensure the survival of the living library biology of Earth. Why Tigetan and not Federation? It is Federation working through Tigeta, as Tigeta is a member of the Federation. Rogue. Is the arc composed of some form of radiation? Not ionizing atomic radiation. It is zero point and it can emit electromagnetic radiation as means of defense, as a weapon. Will the arc be used as a weapon? It can be used as a weapon, knowing how to trick its defense mechanisms. That's why it is said that no army that has the Ark before them can be defeated. It becomes invincible. Okay, you said it was used before. Question, when and how have they been used in our history? It is used every time the biology of a place needs to be restored, even if it is to repair the DNA of one animal or plant. Each time there is a cataclysm, it is used, for example, after the flood. It is wrongly said that the Ark was given from God to Moses. That would be between the years 1330 and 1325 BC, and the Arks are much older, from before the flood, right before it, made to preserve the living library as it was threatened by the consequences of the destruction of Tiamat. And how is it used when it's necessary to use it? I mean, what's the process? The sample is taken by frequency resonance or frequency compatibility with the species to be repaired. This is by or with the use of very precise tractor beam-like technology loaded into a computer that controls a metpod, also to the computer that controls the external tractor beam that will then be used to print the change onto the animal in question. It will print it directly onto its cells by use of dominant frequency principle, exactly as in a metpod, but without having to place the animals inside a machine. This is a correction, not an alteration. So the changes will not reverse. It is a little help for any species to return to its correct biology as represented in a lower density from a higher density. To reseed a place, you need to reproduce many animals in a lab lab-grown animals from specimens that were developed from the ark's DNA, imposing the DNA data onto empty mother cells to create a zygote that will grow in a medical pod into a full animal. When you have enough of them, you then free them in the correct place in the chosen planet. Wow, that's a huge process! considering how many animals there are out there. You only need a few animals and they reproduce, depending on the species. But you do need a large ship with the correct labs in it, like this one that also holds an ark. Yes, but there are so many species. To reintroduce all of them, that's a huge project. It is. Or you can bring live ones from another planet that has them. This is done all the time. Okay, I have this question. Ron Wyatt found the Ark supposedly where Solomon placed it exactly under Golgotha when the blood drained from Christ. What is it that he found then? Any idea? contradicts my data. No Christ to have an ark placed under. Right, but then any idea what it was he found, supposedly? No, I heard another theory or rumor, but it was about the Holy Grail, not the ark. 
cannot know what that came from, but it heavily contradicts my data. Okay, next one. Is it related to the Holy Grail and have negentropic life-prolonging effects? That's another subject, more or less related. That's the Holy Grail. I am talking about the Ark. Okay, then let's put that aside. Yes, or we will digress. Okay, this question. I imagine the Ark has some sophisticated security system that chooses which individual can have access to it. I would like to know what parameters it measures and how it does it. It does. It defends itself with a variety of weapons, mostly magnetic and electric. It is all controlled by holographic AI inside. It is a very elaborate machine. It is seen as divine magic. It's just technology they cannot understand. But does it only respond to certain individuals? What parameters does it have? It does. It depends on how it is programmed. It is meant only to be accessed by the correct species or individuals, as you said. Some may move it, others cannot open nor use it. Others cannot even get anywhere near it without the Ark defending itself with sometimes lethal force. It reads your frequency and your DNA. It knows who you are. And does it go by races, like all Tigetans, or specific people? It does. Tigetans may move it. Any Tigetan. Tigetan starseed too? Or must be a non-human Tigetan? No, it reads DNA and frequency of existence. It does not care where you were supposedly born. Cool, so it wouldn't destroy me if I get close to it. It knows if someone is regressive or not depending on its frequency. So that is from where the legend started, that only the worthy can get close to it. It repels unwanted people, like a magnet repelling another. If they insist, then it will activate the next level of defense. So other races, if they are positive, would not be harmed either. May not harm them, but may not let them get close either. I see. Okay, next. What does it have to do with Ten Commandments? From my point of view and my data, the Ark has nothing to do with the Ten Commandments except for Biblical propaganda. May have been hijacked, in a way, to be used as an excuse not to let people look at the tablets Moses broke, supposedly placed inside the Ark, perhaps because they never existed in the first place. Remember the Bible was put together by Romans. Yes. All right. Next. Harald Kautz Vella talks about three or four arcs and mentioned that the black goo was part of them. Black goo is related to planetary DNA as holding the frequency of DNA of the entire planet in its crystalline structure. I have not heard Harald Kautz Vela on this subject, but I know the guy. Directly it has nothing to do with the black goo, but I see his point, and it would be logical if it is what I imagine he is thinking about. Three or four arcs? That's correct. Interesting. Next question. Is it true that it has the same measurements that the inside of the great sarcophagus? That is correct. The exact same measurements, because it was placed there as a container for it for a long time. This to communicate with afar, etherically. That was the exact resting place for the Ark, its original box or keeping spot. Wow, cool. Okay, this one. Are the cherubim on the top as representation of male and female? No, they represent two civilizations that worked to make the Ark, Caristus and Tageta. It was wrongly stated before that each angel on top 
represented two aspects of Tibetan culture, matriarchal and patriarchal. This is incorrect, as it leaves out Charistus very involved with all this. Both Charistus and Taigeta use winged people as their cultural symbols. Then why aren't Charistus in the possession of any now? They are. The Ark of Gabriel now in Russian possession is under Charistus control. So there is one destroyed Ark and two remaining. One under Charistus control, the other under Tigetan control. Fascinating. Last question. Was there a method to defend against the Ark power? Not that I know of. It used frequency weapons, the hardest to defeat. Yet we now know that one Ark was finally destroyed either by the Nazis or by the Americans or both in the 1940s. Thank you. Well, that ends my list of questions. Welcome, right on the hour. The Grail is another subject. We can go into as well some other time. Sure. Have a great night. Hugs.